All right, hey, welcome back to Rick Report. So today, I'm going to make a nail header. So, I'm gonna take this piece of steel, uh, scrap steel that I picked up, and I'm gonna go ahead and make, or show you how I make, I'm gonna be making this nail header. This piece of steel is kind of like the steel I use to make my twist and wrench. Um, so it's two and a half inches by uh, five eighths. By approximately uh, 13 inches. So, essentially, nail, the whole idea behind the nail header is um, to, give, to give that the head of the nail somewhere to uh, spread out on. So, I mean, you could, you could make real thick, I've seen people make thick ones where they could stick them in the hardy hole. Um, I've seen ones where you can essentially take them apart to remove the nail easily without damaging the, the back side of the nail, uh, hammering it out. What, what I'm gonna make is, I'm gonna make a pretty basic standard one. Um, If you're delicate enough, you could tap them out without damaging um, the point part. Now, I I was using this piece of steel uh, for my nail header, um, and I, I, I'll probably take advantage of that that I've already made one. But what I did was I drilled. Um, I went ahead, I drilled out this little hole, let's see. <laughs> so I went ahead and drilled that out. And then I used a, um, a file. And I squared it up. So the whole key to a nail header is basically having a square hole uh, because most of your stock that you're going to use for a nail is going to be in a square shape. Now you could, you could put it on a circular shape, but um, the, the square will actually keep it more defined. So I'm going to make two, basically two of them, one, one that's going to accept the one eighth and then one that's going to ex accept, uh, I believe it's three sixteenths. A lot of people make nails different ways. So some, some will take, um, they'll go ahead and just take round stock and they'll go ahead and forge it out into that tape into a taper in a flat end they'll put it after they do that they'll put it inside the nail header and then they'll flatten it out um, so that's one way to do it the other method is to actually take a flat stock so a flat stock like this and basically shear or cut off uh, nail blanks so then you just take that nail blank uh, place it in that slot 
and then you just head it right there. So I think most of my nails that I'm going to be making in the future are going to be based upon taking that flat stock. Um, just, just to make it more efficient. Um, now I think if I make large, large nails, like really large nails, uh, I'm obviously going to forge those at a round stock. But any of the little nails I make, they're, they're going to be off of flat stock. So this flat stock. All right, so let's go ahead and make a useful multi. Um, so not just one, but multiple. I'm going to make a nail header. So I'll be able to take out one tool and I'll be able to um, create multiple nails. Now, because this piece is 5 eighths thick, um, I think it was 5 eighths thick. Let's see. No, it's not 5 eighths thick. It is closer to a half inch. <laughs> All right. This is thick enough to take a bead in. So I'm not really worried about any um, warping or um, this piece getting just destroyed from pounding on it. So I'm, I'm not going to use harden, hard, I'm not going to harden it or anything. Um, as long as you keep the steel cool, it's not going to really mess up too much. Um, so I believe, I'm pretty sure this is mild steel. Um, so this is a low carbon steel. Um, So even if even if it does get messed up over time, it'll be fairly easy to make a new one. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get this shape cut out. Kind of get a shape drawn on here. So when I use this tool, I'm always going to use it over a Pritchel hole, either a Pritchel hole or my Hardy hole. Um, in this case, it's most definitely going to be used over my Pritchel hole most of the time. Um, as far as the handle, I'm going to do a <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do these twists over here. I'm actually going to cut, cut this stock. So I have Probably be better if he's something to run a straight line, wouldn't it? Okay. So, probably run about a nine inch section. All right. And then what I'll do is huh, I'll keep all those holes. All right, so let's 
square that up. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, take that corner off. Take that. All right. So here's the idea. So I'm going to go ahead, this is all going to be removed, all that section. I am going to keep these holes because I already made an effort into making them. Might as well keep them. <laughs> I'll just have to square this piece up and square this tiny piece. I'm not even sure if I would use that, but and I'm going to chop off the edges. All right, so, and then obviously I'm going to do a, um, I'll do a spiral, tw uh, let's do a sp split twist on that. All right, so go ahead and cue the fast forward. Get all that. <laughs> so I used the magnet just to pull up some of that. Um, I've actually been saving this stuff just in case I wanted to try uh, this method of uh, um, what is it called? It's a type of a uh, process of taking the powder and tur turning it back into a, a steel stock. Uh, so it's essentially just turning it back into weld. So I've been collecting this. Um, shavings. <laughs> I'll try to do a video on that at some point. But there's a technique in the turning powder back into a uh, solid stock. Kind of like forge welding a little bit. Also, if you do this type of stuff and you don't use magnets, you're missing out on one of the best <laughs> cleanup tools ever. Magnet. Magnets are your friends when you're a blacksmith. Or any any uh, tool shop. So it's always good to have good neodymium magnets around. All right, got off on a tangent there. All right, so what's what's gonna be nice about this tool is it'll have multiple functions. So I could use this as a rivet um, header. Or place it under the piece if I'm setting a rivet and then also nails. So it's going to be a mixture of rivets and nails. Um, so that's going to overall help me out. Just clean this up a bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat it up, put this on an angle. So I'm going to put a bend right here. 
I'm also going to rotate the bar. And I think I said I was going to do a split twist. So let me go ahead and chisel those marks out. Get rid of this cutting fluid. And a good thing about this also is I'll be able to add, I'm going to leave room on it. So if I ever wanted to add, uh, add on to it, it gives me the option. I'm a fan of tools that have multiple uses. <laughs> Just get more, more, more bang for the effort. Uh, and also the cond condensing down. Um, like this, for example, the twist wrench, this tool has been working out excellent, which I'm going to use this by the way, uh, for this. And then, so I'll be able to at least place one, two, three, four, uh, Oh, I might even be able to make a, uh, nah, I don't know. It might be too much. Eh, I might be able to make a section that the, for uh, monkey heads. So basically, if I have a portion, let's say I make a tenant and it's not as round as I want it to be. Uh, then you basically put the monkey tool on it, you put it in the vise, put the monkey tool on it, and you hammer it down until it takes the form of the circle size that you want. I could do that. Um, I don't know. Nah. It wouldn't be enough stock. I'll have to make one of those. I'll actually show you the one that I use. I made a while ago. Let's see. It's a pretty crude, crude tool. Can't find it. There it is. All right, so. This is about my most crudest tool I made. All right, so that's the striking in. And then that is the hole. So you place that over the tendon that you're trying to uh, either fix or make it look more round. So you heat up the item, the tenant, you hammer this into it on the vise or, um, yeah, I usually use it in the vise. That's basically a monkey tool and that's one eighth. Uh, it's a one eighth hole. Let's see. Yep. So that one's a one eighth. So you basically heat up the item, put it over, and hammer it down. And then you get more of a nice, consistent, it ends up looking like that on the end. And then if you wanted to rivet an item, it fit through the hole better, and um, you just get a cleaner rivet. All right, so. Go ahead and set up the forge, get that all lit. All right. Go ahead and throw this in the forge. Actually, let's get those split lines running. That 
split twist. Okay. Good thing about this piece is it's got so much mass to it, probably not really gonna have to uh, anchor it down when I'm chiseling it. Okay, so on the way over I'm gonna put a put a little bend in that handle um, at the anvil. Alright, so here we go. Two-step process. thing I could do that then well actually let's go ahead and do this quick. I'll do the bend after rectangle than a square so that's why it's got that interest in Twists are far enough away from interfering with it laying flat on the anvil. So that was something I was concerned about, but. this end up now go ahead and heat this end up I'll bend it over the anvil so um, that's where I'm gonna make the bend all right should be hot enough
take some of these edges off. hot pieces of steel, you know that they radiate heat very well. <laughs> this little thing just warmed me up pretty good. forging it, I'm just taking the edges off instead of having to grind them down. It gives me a good surface area um, to add additional. All right, so I got a nail sample heated up. Let's go ahead and use the nail header.
it's giving it a head. Um, this nail stock is a little too small for this hole. I'll be messing around with this item a little more in the future. It kind of gives me a blank slate to um, be able to make different types of heads, uh, whether it be rivet heads or just nail heads. If you enjoyed watching this, um, go ahead and give me a like. And if you'd like to see more content when I develop basic tooling for blacksmithing, um, just let me know down in the comments below. Um, Little, little uh, items like this can end up being useful for years. I mean, there's no way I'm going to wear this thing out um, too fast. Alright, thank you for watching.